In this tutorial, we're gonna focus on creating the smoke effect that you see on the left. And then at the end, we will take a look at some different ways you can customize the effect to get something similar to the fire effect on the right. So this is fully procedural, meaning it's all created within After Effects and there's no need for plugins or any footage. Let's start off by creating a new composition and I'll call it underscore underscore M-A-I-N. Now, 1920 by 1080 is what I'm working with. I'm gonna go with 60 frames per second. You could go with 30 if you wanna render faster. The first thing we need to do is create a triangle shape. So I'm gonna right click in this area here, go to new, go to solid. I'm gonna call this one smoke 001, 1920 by 1080. White is good. Now what I'm gonna do is just zoom out a little bit by scroll wheel down click on the pen tool now you want to make sure that the layer is selected when you do this so you create a mask instead of a new shape in the newer versions of After Effects you see this icon with a little square with a dot in the middle that lets you know you got the right tool selected so I'm gonna draw the shape in here go with something like that now we've got our basic shape and we could start distorting it okay so now let's go to our effects and presets and type in t-u-r-b-u -U. turbulent displace here under distort we could drop that onto our layer and and I'm gonna bring the amount up just a bit here and eventually I'm gonna animate this value but notice as I do that I'm moving the source up and down which I don't want so go to your pinning select pin left lock so now when you move it you'll see that everything moves on this side but on the left side, it stays locked in place. So our source will be constant, which is great. Now I'm gonna hold down option and click on my offset. So I can put an expression here, open bracket, closed bracket, and then press the left arrow. And my first value is the one that I wanna animate, which is the X. So for X, I'll do time asterisk 300 and then comma, and this will be our Y value. I don't want it to move on the Y at all. So I'll type in zero and then just click in an empty spot. Let's see how this works. Do a little preview. Okay, so that speed is good. I'll go with that. We've distorted this end. I don't wanna see that edge coming off as it is. I'm gonna take my layer and then just scale it up a bit. It's okay to scale this up because I'm gonna blur this anyway, so I'm not really worried about quality. I just wanna make sure this edge is hitting the edge of the composition and looking right. Now I wanna do a little bit of softening of edges and, and fading out towards this side here. So if you middle mouse click drag, you can pan your window up. I'm gonna collapse my effects area and I'm gonna expand my mask and expand mask one. Going to mask feather, that'll give me a feathered edge. I'm gonna add another mask. Let's draw it with this rectangle here, cutting off this end. And you'll see as you do that, you get this weird look here. And what is actually going on? So if we look at this mask, it's set to add. So I'm going to set this to subtract. Now we're using this mask to cut off the edge, expand this, drag the feather out. And as we do that, we're going to get this nice fading effect. Now let's add a little bit more variation into our movement. So if I click and drag evolution, you'll see that you get some extra free movement. So let's option click type in time asterisk 40 something like that we'll do a quick preview to just make sure this isn't going too fast okay so i think that's working nicely what i also want to do is look at complexity and i'm going to take this value up here and as i do that you're going to see at a certain point you're going to have too much detail so you want to avoid that i also want to avoid like pieces coming off separating like that so i'm going to take the complexity as high as it goes with still uh, looking like a decent smoke shape. So I'm, I'm gonna go with that. The next thing I wanna do is open up evolution options. This random seed is really important. You'll see as you drag that, you'll get a different look each time and I'm gonna undo. I'm gonna have multiple layers with this effect on it and I don't want them to be lined up exactly. So I'm gonna put an expression here so that each layer will look differently. And I'm gonna hold down option and click the stopwatch here. So let's do a thing called index. And what does index do? You don't have to follow along with this part. I'm just using this as an example, I'm gonna create a new solid just so I have a second layer, hide it. And I'm gonna press EE -E to reveal only my expressions. Take a look at what number this layer is. This is layer two now because this white solid is number one. And because our index is our expression here, this number will equal this number. So if I took the white solid, brought it below, now we see smoke is layer one and our random seed is one, which is great because we have a lot of flexibility once we start duplicating the smoke layer. And what I also wanna do is is be able to have this change depending on the layer, but also be able to control it myself. So I'm gonna type in value 
plus index. What that means is the layer will be random, but we also have the ability to come in here and drag the slider. If needed to make a change, we can do that. And also note that as I drag this number, it's increasing by tens. And if I hold down command and drag this number, I could change it by ones. Now let's take our turbulent displace and duplicate it. Select this, press command D. Now we've got a second version going out of control. So let's see what we could do to tone this down. I'll, I'll take the size down a bit and I'm gonna take the amount also down. See, we're just getting a second layer of complexity, something pretty subtle. Let's um, select this layer, press EE, -E. so just E twice. I'm gonna go with, let's try a slower amount for, for the uh, evolution and the uh, movement on the X. So what I'll do is take this from 300, let's make this 200 and I'll time of 40, let's make this, you know what, maybe let's make the evolution a little bit faster just to add even more variety. How does this one look? And we're starting to get some detail. Always wanna do a playthrough. I think it's going a little too far. I don't like when I get these really long peaks sticking out, that's gonna cause problems later on. So I think what I need to do is go to the original one. We could take the amount down a little bit, maybe adjust the size a little bit here. Okay, so I, I think that's better. Let's try to see how this looks. Yeah, I think that's working better. Now, as the smoke gets further away from the source, I want it to start to dissipate. And I'm gonna do that with a fast box blur, F-A-S-T space B, that should get you there. Fast box blur. I'm gonna throw this onto the smoke layer. I am going to, uh, let's collapse everything up for now. And this white solid can go. What I'm gonna do is just bring this value up to something that looks good. I'm not worried about this part because I'm going to mask that off. I want to check that it looks okay over here. Yeah, so, something that's blurred, but I'm not going so far where I can't see any detail at all. That's kind of what I'm looking for. Okay, this feels like it's about right. Now we need to put a, a mask on this effect. So let's find where we do that. I'm going to I'm gonna twirl up some of these things. So I just see this fast box blur. Let's expand that up. And then we hit this plus sign and okay so now we've enabled masking on this effect but we don't have a mask to use so we need to make one now i'm going to go to this tool here i'm going to draw one out we need to tell the effect which mask to use and it's the last one this purple one mask three so let's find it okay so i'm going to make sure you could see what i'm clicking on all right this should work so mask three i choose that and now you see the mask isn't acting on the original layer anymore it's just acting on that effect we're going to find mask and we know this is the one because there's a little FX icon in front of this mask. So we know that's the one. Now let's open that up and go to mask feather, bring this amount up. And if we zoom in, we could see, okay, we might need to make some adjustments, but let's just turn it off and on. And you can see, yeah, as it's moving out here, we're getting some of that softening and dissipation. And remember it's this purple one, which is good. So I could take this, move it around if I need to adjust that. Make sure we got enough room here to cover everything with that feather. And yeah, so I could come back into the blur radius now if I want to uh, adjust that if I need more or less. Blur it enough where you could see a blur but still see detail. Now we could add some detail to the inside of the shape. I'm gonna type in fractal space N, that'll get you there. Fractal noise under noise and grain. Let's drop it under here. I'm gonna close up some of these other things. Let's go from basic to dynamic twist. Let's go and change some of the settings here. First of all, we need to check out the size. I'll expand transform and find the scale. Okay, something like that. So our level of detail is matching somewhat. We could collapse this for now and then go adjust the contrast so that it looks about right. You don't want too much contrast. You can also adjust the brightness here. Let's set our blend mode to hard light and then take the brightness down, adjust the contrast. Okay, I think this is looking pretty good. I might take the complexity down. You only want the complexity as high as you need it or else you're just unnecessarily adding to your render time. I'm feeling like this is pretty good. You can see the a before and after. We've got detail. It seems like it's matching. You can open up our sub settings and adjust the sub influence, adjust the sub scaling. 
Okay, and you just gotta, you gotta eyeball it until it feels right. This seems like a good setup here. I'm going to start adjusting some of the animation. Let's start off going into transform again and finding the offset option, click that. We'll do a open bracket, close bracket, then left arrow to go in between. For the X value, we'll do time asterisk, I don't know, 200 comma Y value, which we don't want to move up and down in the Y, so make that zero. Take a look and see how that works. Okay, so it looks like the fractal noise is moving a little bit slow compared to the movement of the outside edges of the smoke. So let's go and make an adjustment here. Go from 200 to 300. 300 seems to work better for this situation, but it's just too static. So let's fix that. We can uh, find our evolution option, click it. I'm asterisk, I don't know, 100, maybe that's a lot. Okay, that's not bad, but I'll, I'll drop this down maybe a quarter, and let's say I'm times 75, just going maybe a tad too fast. All right, so that's feeling a little bit better. We're getting some more randomness. Now we also have sub settings here. I'm gonna borrow this value, just copy and paste, borrow that value, find your sub settings, expand it if you need to, and then find the, where is it, sub offset. Option, click the sub offset here, paste that number. Maybe instead of 300 though, I'll make this one 200. The sub offset, is the sub settings are at a different scale. It, even though it's 200, it just feels like it's going way too fast. 70 maybe or 60. Yeah, so 60 seems like that's working. We've got the bulk of the effect. Now it's just a matter of making some copies. But before we do that, what I wanna do is get some evolution options. Open this up here, find the random seed. Option, click on that like we've done before. V-A-L-U-E plus sign and index. And then click in an empty spot. So now we've built in some randomization based on layers. Now I'm going to scroll up and collapse this layer here. Command D to duplicate. Now you'll see because we've set the randomness up right, we've got two different looks here, which is great. And what I want to do is collapse some of this stuff to stay neat. I want to add displacement here. So let's type D I S P L. We see under distort, we got this displacement map and let's drop it onto our layer here. And now let's tell it what layer to use. We don't want it to use itself. So let's Let's make sure we go and select the second layer too. Also, we want to switch this from source to effects and masks. And now we want to change some of these values here. So you got to notice when you're doing this, if I'm pushing it this way, I'm going to get a hard edge right here at the beginning. I don't want that. So if I drag this here to the left, that's going to solve some of that issue. And let's try the uh, vertical displacement. We want to displace this, but we don't want it to look weird with any hard edges or these kind of repeating loops in here. So be pretty subtle. Also, you could check out do you want to go with the color channels do you want to go with luminance do you want to go with alpha you'll get different results and you'll see we're getting that hard edge again because this value doesn't work that well with the alpha but if i move it in this direction i'm getting a more interesting look the next thing is we can look at blend modes so i can try overlay see how that works okay we are getting more detail it's looking more interesting i might take the opacity down a little bit i'm going to press t on the keyboard to show opacity and you could lower this and i'm just going to make it more subtle i'm going to do the same thing i'm going to select this layer and press command d we're going to get a third version of it and also we could collapse this stuff and take a look at we used alpha let's go with luminance on this one and adjust our values. This one, instead of having it be the third layer down, let's make this one based on the second layer down. A little bit more variety is always good. Get these settings. Remember, don't wanna to go too far, but if you go far enough, you'll start to get kind of interesting wisps in here. So that's basically our smoke effect. You could add more layers if you want, if your computer processor can handle it. This is a general idea, and you could go into any of your settings, any of your effects, and make adjustments to get an infinite amount of variability. Variation. Now what you could do is click the first layer, shift click the bottom layer, right click and pre-compose. Let's call this smoke one and say, okay. Now I've got smoke one in my main comp. What I can do is rotate it. Press R for rotate. Let's zoom out a bit here. Let's put it in a different spot. And then we can make a copy of this comp pressing command D after you select it. Now we've got smoke two, let's bring that in. Let's also press R for rotate, give it a similar angle. Now they're both the same exact thing, but if we double click on smoke two, we can select the layers and I'm gonna press EE really fast. And that's gonna show me all of my expressions. And this is gonna be a lot, but what I wanna do is 
make sure I could still see my smoke as I'm making adjustments. What I'm gonna do is look for value plus index and I know when I see that I've got access to my random seed and I'm just gonna drag that for all these value plus index. We got I think three per each layer. I'm just gonna make changes to each one of those. Go to the next layer and value plus index, change that. Go to the last layer, find all these, make changes. We could jump back into main. And now you can see we basically have a completely different look. So adjusting the random seed has given us two different looks. There's more ways to make adjustments. If I jump into let's say smoke two, cause we already have the tab open and I'm gonna make this window a little bit bigger, start collapsing up. You can press command A to select all and then collapse one, they'll all collapse. So what I wanna do is adjust the initial mask. Let's say you want wider smoke or more narrow smoke. You just find your original triangular mask and you could even take this one down. So I'm starting on that first layer. I'll do the same thing for the rest of the layers and I'm just making the source a little bit smaller too. All right, so jumping back, you'll see now you've got a narrow bit of smoke. And one last thing, see you all RV, you got curves and we can drop curves onto this smoke here. Give yourself a little bit bigger view. Okay, so obviously you could adjust the contrast, but if we go into the red channel, we can make this more red. We can go into the green channel. All right, so now we're getting kind of like a fiery, smoky look and you can adjust how, how much brightness you want by going into the reds and greens. And let's look at blue and just the overall RGB. If you want more contrast go into the alpha if you want some more transparency or less some different ideas for creating different types of smoke or maybe even a fiery smoke you could even combine two different smokes on top of each other to get fire so some different ideas for really quick and easy changes of looks